Everyone, we're just gonna give it a few more seconds here. Just let people kind of filter in. All right, so we're just gonna start the meeting. So good, ever, good evening and welcome to tonight's neighborhood meeting. My name is Jasper Sidhu and I'm a planner with the city's development services department. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to present to you the neighborhood, a development concept being considered by the owner and development team of 159 Heronia Street. Prior to a development, uh, formal development application being submitted to the city, this provides an opportunity for the development team to hear initial community feedback and incorporate it into their plans prior to making a full and formal development application to the city. Uh, please be aware that we are recording this meeting for the public record and uh, the recording will be used for the purposes of gardening, gardening your input and to respond to inquiries and will be considered public information. Please also be aware that as a registered attendee tonight, your mailing or email address will be added to our mailing list so that you can receive further information about the application as it progresses. Should you uh, have further questions about regarding the collection, please contact the Development Services Department. I would also like to let everyone know that there are staff behind the scenes managing the technology tonight. Uh, they're here to make sure the meeting runs smoothly, to uh, grant participants the opportunity to speak, and to assist with any questions in the chat. Please bear with us if we have any technical issues, and if for some reason you get disconnected, please feel free to log in again. Uh, so the intent of tonight's meeting is to provide members of the public with an opportunity to become familiar with the development application and the planning review process, and to ask questions uh, for the applicant and provide feedback. What to expect? Uh, during the na virtual neighborhood meeting is a brief overview of the city's review process and timeline, a presentation from the applicant's representative describing the proposal, and an opportunity to ask questions of either the applicant or city staff and provide comment or identify concern with the application. What not to expect. City staff recommendation on the application or a detailed analysis on the proposal and a debate on the merits of the proposal between city staff and the applicant. Uh, so before we get into the presentation, I just want to quickly highlight the next steps in the application process. This neighborhood meeting is established early in the development process to ensure local concerns are incorporated or addressed through the city's review. After this meeting, we expect that the applicant will make a formal submission of, the, of this development project. Formal submission undergo a full technical review and must address comments received from this neighborhood meeting from the city's technical departments and external agencies and from members of the public more broadly. In conjunction with this, a statutory public meeting will be held virtually on the application as at planning committee. Uh, at a public meeting, applicants present their application to council, answer questions and provide overview of and respond to any issues or concerns identified during and prior to the neighborhood meeting. As part of the public meeting, members of the public also have an opportunity to provide verbal or written comments. Following a public meeting, staff will continue the technical review process and the applicant will make any necessary revisions to the development proposal. Once the review process has concluded, a staff's recommendation report is brought to council for their consideration. All comments received throughout the review process, including those received at tonight's neighborhood meeting and public meeting, are identified and addressed in the staff report and form part of staff's recommendation on the subject application. A staff, for this, a staff report for this particular application would likely be brought forward to council sometime in 2022 or 2023. And um, I will now move on to the applicant's presentation. As I mentioned, the, pro, uh, the proposed project and application will be presented first, uh, which we will follow with a question and comment period. Uh, so tonight we are focusing on the zoning bylaw amendment proposed at 159 Heronia Street. The applicant's planner is James Hunter from Innovative Planning Solutions. Uh, the proposed amendment to the zoning bylaw will facilitate the development of five street townhouses with frontage along Heronia Street. I will now hand over the meeting controls over to James, who will first introduce himself and then share uh, their presentation on the proposed development. Thank you, everyone.
All right, thank you, Jasper. And good evening, everyone. My name is James Hunter. I am a senior planner with Innovative Planning Solutions. I am here tonight representing the applicant for a rezoning at 159 Hirona Road. On this slide here, you can see the subject lands, again, located at 159 Hironia Road. It is located at the intersection of Hironia and Little Avenue, and it has land holdings of approximately 0.14 hectares. It has uh, approximately 52 meters along Hironia Road of frontage and 20 meters along Little Avenue. The subject property does uh, currently contain one single detached dwelling, and it is used for residential uses. And the surrounding land uses are low density and medium density, consisting of single detached dwellings, townhomes, and a variety of other uses. In the current City of Barrie official plan, the subject lands are designated as residential on Schedule A. They are also within the Painswick North Planning Area. Uh, Hironia and Little are both arterial roads. And there is a natural heritage resource, which is considered a level one with the existing development, which is a connected with lot on the property. As well on Schedule I, this is within the built up area. To provide a brief planning overview of the 2018 official plan, again, it is residential, which does permit all forms and tenure of housing. And the goals and principles of the official plan aim to accommodate the current and projected needs of residents with an approximate mix and range of housing options. And this does contribute to a complete community and supports uh, more attainable housing options. Within the built up area, the official plan does direct 40% of residential building unit within these areas annually. And it does encourage residential revitalization and intensification throughout the built up area. Uh, and this is in order to support healthy neighborhoods and, is, and to achieve a desirable compact urban form. In the official plan, intensification does represent an, an essential component of the city's growth management strategy with support for medium and high density developments in order to provide a complete range of housing options for all of its residents. As well, the official plan does direct the zoning bylaw to be amended to allow for innovative housing where it is recognized to be in accordance with good land use planning principles. Under the current official plan, this form of development is supported. The official plan recently passed by the city of Barrie uh, is now in effect, but it is under review by the Ministry of Affairs and Housing, which is considered the province. Um, so uh, until that time, the 2018 plan is in effect, but just to provide an overview of the 2022 plan, uh, this is within the neighborhood area, which is the yellow area here, and is also considered within the built up area of the city. Uh, so within these areas, residential redevelopment and intensification is supported, uh, but it does place emphasis on appropriate scale, height and density for the neighborhood, as well as the new official plan does permit a full range of housing forms, types and options. So under the, the new official plan, the subject development such as townhomes would be supported. For the subject application, we are seeking a zoning bylaw amendment as the subject lands are under the residential single detached dwelling uh, first density, which is the R1 zone in the city of Barrie zoning bylaw, the, the yellow here. And the neighborhood does contain a wide diversity of land uses. And this is evident by the zoning map as you can see here. So we have residential uh, lots in the R1, uh, the R2 zone, as well as we do have some R3 mixed in. There's residential multiple dwelling, which permits semis and higher densities, which is RM1 and RM2, which is the brown and the, the burgundy. And then there's also the environmental lands, which is the open space and the light green and the dark green for environmental protection. So under the, the current R1 zone, it doesn't permit a semi or a townhouse. It's just for single detached dwellings. Therefore, we have to do a zoning bylaw amendment to the RM2 zone, which is the residential multiple dwelling second density, uh, the townhouse zone in the zoning bylaw. Uh, the concept development that we're presenting tonight is a five unit townhouse development. So it has been designed to provide a consistent street frontage, creating a strong street presence and enhanced public realm. Each unit is projected to be approximately seven to eight meters in width. And this is sizable uh, lot frontages for townhomes in the city of Barrie. Uh, we'd be looking at a three-story built form which would have a max height of 10 meters and we would have two to three parking spaces per unit which is also subject to the design of the actual unit so we could have uh, one or two parking spaces in the front yard as well as one to two in the garage likely one plus one and we have included seven meter rear guards which does provide generous open space for landscaping amenities as well as we can do some buffering and landscaping to the adjacent properties as well through uh, discussions with the city, 
We do have a, a 30 meter by five meter road lining along each street frontage, and then a 10 by 10 site triangle. So that creates a development limits right here. Uh, so our, our intent for the application uh, is to have townhomes that will be compatible to the area and complementary to the surrounding land uses. So the form of development that we're working on hasn't yet been determined. Um, however, if we are looking to go with a townhouse built form, we want to ensure that's a high quality built form. Uh, the, the slide here is just some ex examples of uh, previous projects and renderings that we, we've collected, just illustrating what a higher quality townhouse will look like. And the applicant would like to bring a, a nice development to the area and something that would complement the neighborhood. As just read uh, overview, we are quite early on in the planning process. This really is kind of step one after pre-consultation. So for a formal application, there's a number of studies that will have to be included. Uh, that includes a planning justification report, an urban design report, an environmental impact study, an arborist assessment, which looks at trees and landscape, hydrogeological assessment and geotechnical assessment, uh, functional servicing and stormwater management, as well as we do have to have architectural drawings and a site plan a noise assessment, and then also a traffic and driveway review, looking at the intersections and parking for the site. In conclusion, the subject zoning bylaw amendment will facilitate the development of five street townhouses located at 159 Huronia Road. We are requesting a change on the zoning law lands, which would be from the residential dwelling first density R1 to residential multiple dwelling second density, which is the townhouse RM2 TH zone. The residential intensification and redevelopment proposed is encouraged by the city, and this is to support a range and diversity of housing types. And development through intensification is supported as it does efficiently utilize land, infrastructure, and services. And the city likes to see a more compact built form. The city very official plan encourages development that contributes to the creation of complete communities and offers intensification, which is part of their growth management strategy. And we believe that the proposed townhouses would introduce a complementary and compatible scale development to the neighborhood. And this application would align with both provincial and municipal policy and objectives. That concludes my presentation for tonight. So I will turn it back over to Jess Breed. Again, we are early on in the process. So we do appreciate any comments, concerns, or any other considerations that you may have tonight. Thank you.